Good morning, everybody, and welcome to God's house. We're uh, coming from our Redeemer Lutheran Church in Winnetka, California, where the sun is out and it's a gorgeous day here in sunny Cal. Today we are celebrating Christ the King Sunday, which is the uh, last Sunday of the church year, and uh, we're finishing out our three three week mini series on the compassion and the uh, encouragement of the scriptures. So we begin, if you're following along, um, the opening uh, song is Great and Mighty is the Lord. There's the re-chorus, and we'll sing that through twice, then the refrain, and come back with the chorus. Would you please stand, and hope you're following along at home. Begin our time together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. The opening responses are passages on compassion and comfort found in the Gospels. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. I go to prepare a place for you and will come back to take you with me. I am the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus approached the town gate of the city of Maine. He saw a dead person being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. His heart went out to her, and Jesus said, Don't cry. A man named Jairus came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him, to come to his house because his only daughter, about 12 years old, was dying. Jesus told Jairus, don't be afraid. Just believe and she will be healed. A man with leprosy came to Jesus and begged him on his knees, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched him. Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. So when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Jesus prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. Sanctify my disciples. Your word is truth. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. Jesus said, the Father will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth lives in you, 
and will be in you. The Counselor, the Holy Spirit, will teach you all things and remind you of what I have told you. Unless I go away, the Counselor will not come to you. The Spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. He will take what is mine and make it known to you. We sing the three verses of the hymn of praise, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Join me as we pray the prayer for the day together, please. Dear Lord Jesus, today we celebrate your kingship as our Lord and Savior, who gave up your life on the altar of the cross. Continue to be our advocate and guide as we live in this world full of sin and evil. Continue to send us the spirit of truth that we may speak your truth to a world in need. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, even in our world today. Amen. Before you're seated, please take time to greet one another with the peace wave. Won't you be glad when this is over and you can actually shake hands and hug one another? Okay. You may be seated, and uh, hopefully you brought a Bible, and if you did, turn to Romans chapter, Romans chapter 8. Okay, Romans chapter 8, and I'm going to begin with uh, verse 18, where Paul is talking about the future glory yet to come. All right, let me read. Paul writes, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope, that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only this, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, which is the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. 
But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. This is the word of our Lord. Now please turn to uh, Luke chapter 23. And by the way, both of these are chosen for the day, these readings. And uh, Luke chapter 23, beginning with verse 32. Okay. So today we conclude the church year with what has become known as Christ the King Sunday, or the Sunday of the Fulfillment. And our focus usually is on the second coming of Jesus, where we focus on his glorious return with all of his angels and archangels, and that will usher in the ju as him as judge of the living and the dead and the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Much of what Paul was talking about in Romans, where creation is waiting for Christ to return and to get back to normal, okay? But today, we're going to finish up this three-week mini-series, if you will, on compassion and comfort and encouragement. Two weeks ago, I used the Old Testament as the basis, okay? And primarily, anybody remember what book of the Old Testament had a lot of, uh, lot of uh, encouragement? The book of Job, yes. And I still can't get over his wife said, curse God and die. What a nice woman, you know. Last week was the epistles of Paul and John and, and uh, others. And today, we're focusing on the, the ministry of Jesus. And we read, a, we're, we read a bunch of the Bible passages. And so today, we focus on Jesus as true God and true man, both natures, which are portrayed in, in the many examples of Jesus' compassion in his ministry, okay? So, the gospel lesson I chose for this day because of the king uh, theme, but also I'll share this with you as we go. Verse 32. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with Jesus to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. They divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching. The rulers sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers came up. They too mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him that read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hurled who hung there with him, hurled insults at Jesus. Aren't you the Christ, he said? So save yourself and save us. The other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? Since you, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered, Today, I tell you the truth. You will be with me in paradise. Powerful setting every time you read that. So the first part of the sermon is on the compassion and the encouragement of Jesus in his ministry. 
and I want to take you back to the life of Jesus. If you go through the Gospels, you will find numerous times where Jesus' compassion is part of the narrative in the healing narratives of, the, of his ministry. So how, the, how does this all work? Well, you start out, Jesus is what? He's somewhere, right? And the important thing is, in Jesus' ministry, he didn't sit in a seminary. He didn't sit in a college or a university. He didn't hang out in the church or a synagogue. Where was he? Hello? He was out among the people. Amazing. He was out among the people, vi visiting them, preaching and teaching. And someone comes along in need and begs, pleads, even falls on their knees, begging him to help their, them in their trouble. That was true of the centurion. Remember the centurion, a man of honor and authority who comes to Jesus, asks for healing for one of his people. The man demon-possessed, and all of the sick people. Remember how they lowered the guy through the roof? And all these others that come to him. And if they could just, what, touch his gown, his garment, they could be healed, okay? And there are many examples. The man with leprosy, imagine this, begs Jesus to touch him on his knees, and he says, Lord, make me clean. And then there's Jairus. Remember Jairus, the synagogue ruler? He comes to Jesus, and he, fall, he falls at Jesus' feet, begging him, pleading with him, Lord, what? Save my daughter. She's only 12 years old. Now, I don't know about you, but when you read that, you just don't read it like we do and pass it off. You, do you see the emotion? You see the power there? These are real people in real time. This is not a fantasy. These are real people with real hurts. And Jairus, to me, how the father falls on his knees before Jesus at his feet. When's the last time you see somebody fall at somebody's feet? I don't think I've ever seen that. And he pleads for Jesus to save his 12-year-old little girl. And the list goes on. How about Mary and Martha at the death of Lazarus? What does Jesus do? He shows up. They're all mad at him. And Jesus goes, and he what? He weeps. He weeps. He's not a computer. He's true human who weeps at the death of his friend Lazarus. And how about the widow of Nain? I don't know about you, but that episode, that just, oh, here Jesus is coming into this little town of Nain, and here's his funeral procession. And a young boy, probably 20 years old, he's being carried out to be buried outside of town. And Jesus finds out who is he. He's the only son of a woman who lost her husband. And her future was not bright. She was in big trouble. And Jesus, what? Has, he has mercy on her. His heart, the Bible says, goes out to her. Okay? And over and over again, Jesus would say to people, don't be afraid, just believe. So today, you know, we can think of Jesus as King and Lord and true God, and often we do focus on him, his glory and power. But today, I want you to think about Jesus the man as true God who interacts with individuals personally and has compassion and gives healing and comfort. Because Jesus doesn't just speak words. 
he performs actions of healing and raising the dead. And that brings us to the greatest comfort. The greatest comfort is a comfort that only Jesus could perform. And that comfort is when he went to the cross and stayed there. I want you to look at that cross event. You know, we think of that, or at least I do, and I think of his obedience to his Father. But the greatest compassion of Jesus is seen with him staying on the cross. When the knuckleheads down below say, well, if you're the Christ, the chosen one, come on down. And the two idiots side beside, the one idiot beside him says, if you are the Christ, Save yourself and save us. Talk about selfish. And Jesus prays, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And he stays on that cross in obedience to his Father. But he stays because of his compassion, his love, his encouragement that through his death he gives us the gift of eternal life. Jesus said, or the, the New Testament says, Jesus becomes our great comfort because he is the resurrection and the life. Okay? And because he lives, we too shall live. Without the resurrection, what happened on Good Friday is meaningless. But with the resurrection, that sacrifice on the cross means so much because there he stays and now rises to give us eternal life. Because I live, he says, you too shall live. So I want you to think about that today. I want you to think about Jesus, not just as Lord and King, but I want you to think about Jesus as the King on the cross, the King of compassion. And let's go back to one last thing. I forgot about this. His engagement with the one thief on the cross who says, Lord, remember me. And Jesus says, this is just powerful. Today, you're going to be with me in paradise. Wow. Part two of the sermon. God's consoling help in our lives is seen also in the return of Jesus. And this is where Romans comes in. When the, fi the final comfort is when Jesus comes again, there is the resurrection of the body, the sufferings of life are over with. Na a nature and the world in which we live has been renewed and is no longer filled with sin. And I want to I remind you today that we live in a sinful, corrupt world. And the reality is we have to deal with sin in this world. But that day will come when Christ comes and that will be taken away. Also in the Romans passage, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses because we don't know how to pray as we ought. The Spirit intercedes for us. In the Romans passage, there's three things that are said in the verses that come, come, come on later. Paul says, we know that in all things, what? God works for the good of those who love God. Number two, if God is for us, who can be against us? And number three, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ. So last part, the Holy Spirit. I want to invite you to, in your prayer life, as you and I deal with the issues of life, pray this prayer more often. Holy Spirit, pray for me. I wonder how many of us have ever prayed that prayer. 
There's a country music song which I listen to. Anybody listen to country music out there? It's becoming a habit of mine more and more, I have to tell you. But I found a song recently, and it's entitled, Which Way to Pray? Anybody ever hear that song? I don't know who, uh, who sang it. Which Way to Pray? And I don't know all the lyrics. But the point is, there are a lot of times in our lives, you and I don't know which way to pray, do we? If Grandma's lying in, the, in, in, in bed, she, or do we pray for God to take her home, or do we pray for her recovery? Or if you're battling cancer, what do we pray for? Lord, take me home or heal me through the chemotherapy. There are a lot of instances in life where you and I, we don't know which way to pray. And I invite you to go home, look it up, and listen to the song, okay? We just don't know. And so I say to you, first of all, pray the prayer, Holy Spirit, pray for me. Because the Holy Spirit is our advocate. He comes along our side. I like the term advocate. Someone who has got my back. Someone who is watching out for me. That's the Holy Spirit. And, you sh and pray that prayer. Holy Spirit, pray for me because I don't know what to pray for. And try and remember that. And let me go through this list, which I found somewhere. The, the Spirit of God comes to me, besides me, and he empowers me to walk with God in a corrupt world. All right? Here's the point. The Holy Spirit, as my advocate, helps me to walk with God in a corrupt world. This fits our time. Where there is so much hate... The Holy Spirit brings what? Love into our lives and hearts. He changes us. Where there is so much negativity, the Holy Spirit does what? Puts things in their proper perspective and gives us a positive outlook. Probably going to get myself in trouble. But I wish the news media would learn to do this. You ever notice, of almost all news, it's the worst scenario. The winds are going to start blowing, the Santa Anas are going to come in, and you know what that means. Fire danger. And we just want to remind you what happened last year, five years ago, and they put on the screen, houses burning down. What idiots. They can take this natural part of life and turn it into the most fearful, the most negative, the most tragic ending. I guess it's all about the ratings, but I'm tired of it. In a world of negativity, the Holy Spirit reminds us what? God's in charge, not the news media. Sorry. All right? Not you, know, not you guys. My life is in God's hand. I can look at life from a positive perspective. I got a few more. Where there are lies and half-truths. Do you ever feel like we're living in a world of lies and half-truths? Who do you know that you can trust? I watch the news and you see all this and I, I've come to the conclusion, forgive me, I'm probably going to get in trouble. You know, we're supposed to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I think we're told not the truth, everything but the truth, and nothing but, nothing but the truth. We're not, tell, we're not telling the truth. And I live in the world and think, where is the truth here? We don't know. By the way, you know what that is? That's a sign of the powers of darkness, because the devil lies. The spirit leads us into truth. And finally, where there's fighting and discord, the spirit brings us peace. This last Wednesday, in our little devotion with some families, we use the, we use the imagery of the brokenness of our lives. And use, and in, use the image of a cup. Anybody remember that? 
You ever have a favorite coffee cup and it gets a little crack in it? And now it's leaking. You can't use it anymore. So we end up, what, throwing it out. But life is kind of that way, isn't it? We have those little things that just aren't working right. It's kind of broken. It's like that coffee cup. It, it just doesn't work anymore. And the point of this is God brings wholeness to us. And you know how he brings wholeness? When our lives are broken, he brings wholeness by through forgiveness. Or little things that really shouldn't bother us, we learn to realize, well, that's really not that important, is it? On the scale of 1 to 10, it's nothing. On, or the ability to forgive, or the ability to move on, or the ability to right the wrongs. So if we live, in, let the Holy Spirit, walk, walk with the Holy Spirit, and let him guide you and bring those things into your life. You Memorize Bible verses that will empower you. And finally, let me say this, and this became very clear this Wednesday in Bible class. Hang around godly people. Be connected to godly people. Not that they're so much more better, much better than others. We learned that, by the way, in the book, in the in the in the book of Genesis with the patriarchs. Jacob's family was terrible. Probably not unlike a lot of families around here. Uh, terrible people, but they were godly people who loved the Lord and saw God involved in their lives with all their failures. And I say to you, finally, surround yourself with godly people. Not perfect people, but people who love the Lord. And I'm going to tell you, folks, one of the things that really bothers me as a pastor is in this time of separation, this is what I think is happening for a lot of our brothers and sisters in this church and God knows what's going on out there in, in American Christianity. We got people isolated, brothers and sisters isolated in their own little world from one another. They can't hug anybody. They can't talk face to face. They're removed. And they don't have that support in their lives. Hang around godly people. Doesn't mean you have to be in a big crowd but have some godly people in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. We are going to continue with the offering of our gifts to the Lord Jesus, and the offering box is in the middle. And during the singing of the song of the day, uh, you're welcome to bring your offerings up to the box. We're going to sing a, actually, it's a Lenten song, and the title of it is Jesus is King. Okay? Four verses of Jesus is King.
got to climb that ladder. Okay, in our prayers for today, uh, tomorrow uh, we will be distributing um, not food baskets this year, but gift cards to families, and uh, we're going to pray for them, and I want to thank everyone uh, who gave, uh, gave a donation toward these gift cards to families. Thank you for your generosity, and we're going to pray for them uh, today. Also want to draw your attention to um, those who are battling cancer, especially Beverly Tyrell, Carol Shimke, and Susan DeGolier. Um, hopefully they're listening to us, and we wish them well, and I want to invite you to pray for them, okay, if you would. And if you'd like to send them a card, uh, please do so. I'm not sure so much about the other two, so, uh, but keep those three ladies in your prayers. And also down in where it says COVID, the Ramirez family, I think there were two or four of them that were, that were diagnosed with COVID. Is that right? Their symptoms are missing. Yeah, their symptoms. And I found out this week that that was a false positive. Now, I wonder, how do they keep track of false positives after people are diagnosed or say they have COVID, but then it turns out to a false? No one keeps track of that. So there's no subtraction of, of the truth. Didn't know that. I'd like to look. If anybody wants to look into that, would you check that out for me, please? Ryan, I think that's a good job for you. Check that out, would you? <laughs> All right, also, uh, June Bricado. Now, June Bricado is an aunt of one of our members, and June passed away Friday evening in her sleep. When you all, we all want to do that, right? I mean, that's the way we want to go, just let us die in our sleep. She was 101 years old. Now, think about this, folks. She was born in 1919, 1919, and she passed away in... Two zero two zero. Now I wonder how many thousands of people there are in the world. There can't be that many, can there? Can't be that many people who can say that they're going to have that on their uh, certificate. 101. Wow. Unbelievable. Okay, so let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, dear Lord, as we come to celebrate Thanksgiving, so dear Lord, we pray for our country. We thank you that our first president and Congress at the time, after a seven-year war, decided it was important to set aside a day in November in 1789 to thank you for preserving these United States of America and enabling that generation to be able to establish this country. And so, dear Lord, today we take time to say thank you Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for these United States of America. And help us as American Christians to pray for this nation. Dear Lord, we raise up our prayers this day. Correct the wrongs that are in, in this country. And affirm that which is right and good in this country. Dear Lord, give us a unity of spirit. Be with us in the days ahead as we move ahead in, in the aftermath of these elections. Dear Lord, guide our country. Give us men and women who are patriots to lead us. Dear Lord, bless, guide, direct, and correct these United States of America. Lord, in your mercy. We pray today also for those families that will receive these gifts for Thanksgiving dinners. Dear Lord, thank you for the generosity of so many people in this congregation. And dear Lord, we pray that these gifts given to these families, that they will be a sign, not so much of our generosity, but rather how you provide for people's needs. So dear Lord, be with these families and may they take the time not to thank us, but to thank you for your provision in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. We pray today, especially for those who are battling cancer. We pray, dear Lord, for Beverly and Carol and Susan and the others who are dealing with health issues. But, dear Lord, we pray for these ladies dealing with cancer. 
We pray, dear Lord, that you would give their bodies the strength, the healing that they need, but also, dear Lord, give them the comfort and the knowledge that their lives are in your hand. It is true, dear Father, that there are times we don't know which way to pray, how good it is for us to know that either way, our lives and the lives of our loved ones are in your hands. Today, we also pray for those who are battling COVID. We pray, dear Lord, that you be with them and grant them the healing that they need. We pray that soon there will be a vaccine or something to help uh, control this, this uh, pandemic. We also pray this day for the family of June Bercato. We thank you, dear Lord, for the 101 years of life that you gave to her. Be with her family through this time. Use these days to bring them together, to give them unity and oneness and thanksgiving for the life of this woman. Bless them through these days. Into your hands, dear Heavenly Father, we commend all for whom we pray as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Spirit bless you, be with you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, a couple of announcements before we sing a great old VBS song. Um, next Sunday, the 29th, we are moving... Uh, this live stream time to 11.30, all right? So for those of you who are here for the band and for those of you who are watching, it will not begin at 11. We will begin at 11.30. We're doing that so uh, during these winter months because it's colder, we're expecting rain, and that will help us uh, with our morning schedule. Everybody understand that? And if you need the details, I can give them to you. But we're, we're doing this on a trial, trial basis uh, through the winter months, and I don't know where the future will lead us, okay? So just so you know, next Sunday morning, uh, the live stream will move to 1130 for the winter season. Also, this coming Wednesday, uh, Wednesday the 25th, we will have a Thanksgiving worship service here, in, live streamed here in this uh, facility, and uh, that will be at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, okay? Live stream and Holy Communion will be celebrated after the service, all right? So this Wednesday, 5 o'clock, live stream uh, here. And finally, uh, I want to draw your attention to the front of the announcements where we will have a voters meeting uh, three weeks from today on December 13th, and that will be concerning uh, hiring, engaging a um, um, uh, organization that will help us through the visioning process for the next decade. Uh, the leadership has gone through and interviewed uh, two, two uh, groups, and so we want to bring that to the voters uh, for this uh, three weeks from today, okay? All right, so let us sing the great VBS song. What is it? My God is powerful.
Have a good week, everybody. And Jesus bless you. And hold on to the rock.